All right, you guys, we are gonna read chapter 11, but before we do, here's Miles eating his food. Chapter 11 is titled, I Saw Light in the Dollhouse. Oh, you're falling. The smell of hot caramel met Amy when she opened the back door. Aunt Claire was at the kitchen table, gently stirring a huge batch of popcorn to coat it with syrup. Soup and salad for supper tonight, she announced when she saw Amy. We have more important things to do than cook dinner. Amy helped herself to a handful of caramel corn. It was good to see a smile after the painful scene at home. This tastes marvelous. Ellen will go crazy. Caramel corn is her favorite thing in the whole world. What else are we going to have? Fudge, Aunt Claire said. Tons of fudge. That's my favorite. Not that I'm going to hang around the party and make a pest of myself. I do remember what it's like to have adults watching every movie make. But we'll cook a double batch. And then tomorrow night, I'll go off to my room after you've eaten and I'll take along, and I'll take along a whole plateful just for me. And how about egg rolls? I have the most marvelous recipe for egg rolls. With pizza? Amy giggled. Her aunt's enthusiasm was irresistible. You're right, a terrible idea. But I bought a huge box of potato chips on the way home and the makings for a very special dip. How does that sound? Terrific. Amy was feeling better by the minute. I'll run upstairs with the stuff I brought from home. Oh, my mother said dad will drop off the cake tomorrow afternoon. He's going out of town and he'll bring it on the way. That'll be fine. And Claire covered the bowl of popcorn with foil and set it at the end of the table. How did it go at home, she asked. Everything back to normal? Amy didn't want to talk about home. It was okay, she said. I wasn't there very long. How's Luann getting along with the sitter? All right, I guess. They make things. Amy changed the subject. Shall I get out the sugar and butter for the fudge? And Claire nodded. It's perfectly obvious Luann needs other people in her life. It isn't fair to expect her to carry the whole burden. I, I know I've offended your mother by saying that, but I couldn't help speaking up the first night, the first night I had dinner at your house. So that's what it was. Sorry. So that was it. That was why Amy's mother turned cool and quiet every time Aunt Claire was mentioned. Anyway, Aunt Claire continued, we have work to do at the moment, right? Do we have enough chocolate for a double batch of fudge? Let me check. And you can open a can of soup, whatever you like. By the time they had eaten, set the fudge to cool and mixed up the dip, which turned out to have 14 ingredients. It was just after nine. There's one more thing we ought to do this evening, Aunt Claire said. You mentioned you'd like Ellen to stay overnight, didn't you? Amy nodded. Then we must get out an extra blanket and air it. There's a chest in the attic packed full of blankets and comforters. They're in good shape, even after all this time, but definitely musty. You run up and pick out one for Ellen. I'll hang it on the clothesline to air tomorrow before I start cleaning. Amy's stomach did a sharp flip-flop. She wasn't ready to go up to the attic, not for a while. The nights aren't very cool now, she protested. Ellen might not even want a blanket. Of course she'll want one, Aunt Claire said. At least there should be one in her, in her room if she needs it. But I'm not sure I can find the chest. It's just at the top of the stairs on the left, a big metal box. You can't miss it. Aunt Claire gave Amy a look and Amy knew she was sending a message. She wants me to know she can trust me to go up there without moving the dolls. There was no way out. She'd have to get the blanket. Amy left the kitchen and went down the dimly lit hall to the stairs. I won't even look at the dollhouse corner, she promised herself. I'll grab the top blanket and run. At the attic door, she hesitated. Maybe she could give Ellen her own blanket instead of getting another one. No, Aunt Claire would surely ask questions. Amy, it was Aunt Claire calling from the kitchen. I forgot to tell you. I think the light is burned out in the attic. Take the big flashlight that's on the table next to my bed. Oh, great. 
Amy's heart thudded as she switched on a lamp in Aunt Claire's room and searched for the flashlight. She was halfway up the stairs. The flashlight beam bobbed on the steps in front of her when she heard a small noise. Mice, please be mice. A funny thing to wish, considering how much she hated mice. She stood still. Y'all be nice. The sound stopped, too, for just a moment, then began again. Something was moving around in the darkness above her. The trunk on the left at the top of the stairs, Amy said the words to herself, trying to close out every other thought. When she reached the top step, she saw the big metal chest right where Aunt Claire had said it would be. She leaned over to loosen the fastening with trembling fingers. The top blanket, she told herself, quick. The wrestling, scraping sound grew louder. It was coming from the dollhouse corner. Without really meaning to, Amy swung the flashlight beam across the attic. The sheet that had covered the house was on the floor in a white heap. The house gaped open. Amy's knees turned to jelly. The flashlight slipped from her fingers. When she tried to bend down and pick it up, she couldn't move. All she could do was stare at the house and at the eerie glow that was beginning to fill the dollhouse parlor. A light in the dollhouse. Amy squeaked in terror and dropped to, the, dropped to a crouch. Her fingers closed on the flashlight and she clattered down the steps, stumbling on the last one and hurtling into the hall. With a sob, she slammed the door behind her and leaned against the wall. Amy! What on earth are you doing up there? It was Aunt Claire again. Did you find the blanket? Everything's okay, Amy quavered. Her voice sounded as if it belonged to someone else. I dropped the flashlight, but it didn't break. She paused, willing her aunt to stay downstairs. I guess I'll, ha I guess I'll do my homework now and go to bed. I'm sort of tired. That's fine, pleasant dreams. What a joke that was. As Amy pulled off her clothes and fumbled with the buttons on her, on her shorty pajamas, she was more wide awake and more frightened than she'd ever been in her life. After a moment's thought, she pushed the rocking chair across the room and hooked its back under the door so that no one and nothing could open it without her knowing. Then she climbed into bed and pulled the sheet over her head. I saw a light in the dollhouse. The words rattled around in her brain and she'd seen even worse. In the second before she ran down the stairs, something had moved in the dollhouse parlor. Something small and standing on two feet. Not a mouse, Amy whispered under the sheet. Oh, I wish it had been a mouse. <laughs>